Hello everyone. Uh, this week's video we are going to start another mini series. So this mini series is going to look at bunkai application for Juji Uke. Juji means to cross, uh, and so in Kata, Juji Uke is this movement. Uh, this would be Geidan Juji Uke, but also you can have Jodan. We will look at both, uh, but I'm going to focus initially on the Geidan version. Uh, so uh, last week I did some videos about my thinking about bunkai and sort of uh, the assumptions that I make when I sort of operate at bunkai. Uh, and I also wrote a blog on a new website, so I'll put links to both that website and to those videos in the comments uh, below uh, and in the description below. So uh, please have a look at those. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, we do videos every Friday, so please click subscribe and please share as with your friends uh, to, uh, to get our new videos every week. Uh, so this, we're going to start with GGUK and over the next couple of weeks we're going to look at different applications for GGUK from different kappa. Uh, but this week I'm going to focus on the starting point of Pinan Yonda. Uh, just as one particular application. So, so um, the first move of the bit of the cat I want to focus on is just this bit. So one, two, three. So just looking at some variations on that for a second. Um, some styles will obviously vary the feet position here, uh, which I'm not really interested in for the purposes of this. But then the next movement is generally the foot comes in. In some styles, this foot comes in, right? Um, but the foot comes in, and then sometimes it's just the body comes straight forward, and at others there's a slight hip rotation which you come through in the hand position from there. Right? So that's the little phase of the catch I want to look at. So, first of all, just for this one, as the punch comes through, I'm going to block and strike into the side of the neck. Now, from my perspective, uh, although this is also perfectly acceptable to come out at the side, because obviously you turn to the side to start the catter. So the category is giving you a reference point that you can decide onto your opponent. To me, as I discussed in the videos last week, the principles of Bujutsu sit above everything else, so I need to be able to vary the application according to my body type. So for example, if I am stronger than Mike, I can just come in and smash, right? Uh, because I'm dominant and powerful enough. If I'm weaker than Mike, then it might be better for me to take this angle because it's simply going to be more effective and more out of the range of that punch, etc. Now, the kata also says that I'm going to block with this hand and strike with this one. Right? However, my personal preference is that I check and cover the centre line first. So I come in to the side of the neck, striking, striking to the carotid artery. From there, I take a deep grip. Now, I can do it this way, or I can do it this way, or I can even just grab the back of the collar. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but as a basic way, we get the fingers in nice and tight, take our grip, take the back of the neck. So in the kata, the foot, comes into the body next. So for me, this is coming back. And then the other foot steps forward. So this is then allowing me to put my emphasis into the choke. Okay. So I'm going to have one, take the collar. Now when you put your hand in, it's really important that your hand uh, fits to the shape of your opponent's neck. So uh, if I just do this this way. So when you put the hand in, don't just put it in rigid. And also don't grab here. This needs to go nice and deep. So you want to allow your wrist to curve. So it comes in nice and deep so I can grip with my knuckles. So even just with a single grip, you can see this affect my posture because the knuckles dig into the muscles at the side of the neck. This curve allows me then, in a second, to rotate. Because I've got no space here, when I put pressure, this will then be able to cut in and it will be tight straight to the neck. If I'm here, there's now a lot of space. So I'll start to move this and not a great deal happen. So, as we do the first phase, we come in, we grab, we can take the back of the neck. Now if I grab here, he can be strong because of his neck muscles, so to come to the top of the head, and I'm bringing this initially right across the Adam's apple. So I'm ending up with my Jujuki with my arms, one arm holding the lapel and the other across the back of the head. So my left arm is going to push, my right arm is going to pull. Uh, and so I'm, I'm outside what I'm going to visualise doing is this, right? So I'm going to pull, keep pushing that one, and pull with that one. So we have this idea of the hands pulling in, so this is pulling the body forward, and then driving through the hip. So if I do that from here, I pull in, I drive in with the body. If I bring my hip forward, I can get the neck as well as the, uh, as well as just the strangle. So I can just have a choke or a strangle, but I can also have the neck, which if I do it without any grip on the lapel, so if I just turn the head so it's sideways on, again will potentially work. So you can take the grip, you can vary the grip by doing this this side, 
Um, so here, here, or here, all will work as long as I get my arm nice and deep through to the back of the head. What I can also choose to do is that when I come round, I can take that to take different angles onto Adam's apple. Personal preference, it's going to depend upon the size of your opponent's shoulders and your personal preference when you do the technique. So, Jujuki, which is almost certainly never a block, this movement can be arm locks, can be strangles, and um, a whole variety of different techniques which we'll look at over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but this is just the first one that I do with students, because usually the first point that they encounter Jujuki in Kata is Pinan Yonna. Uh, so, for this is the first application that I usually teach. Cover, strike to the side of the neck, take. I can obviously then add all the other techniques that I want under the sun from here and then get my Jujuki. If we follow the kata, then I have the strike to the back of the neck, right? Uh, as one potential follow up as well. So if you think about the fact that you've come here, here it doesn't have to be a block. You can be thinking about this strike. So there's a further option that you can follow on through. So next week we'll have another look at GGUK, but we will have a look at examples of GGUK being used as an armor. See you next week.